Hello! Today I'm going over how to remove supports and post-process resin 3D prints. Alright, so let's get started. So I have my Fay model printed out here. The only thing that I've cut out is me removing this from the build plate. All I did was go around, take snips like this, and just clip around the base. Um, for a model this fragile, I don't like taking the pallet knife and trying to squeeze it under there because usually it'll cause like pushing force right here and I don't want to like accidentally break her arm or something. So this is a bigger model, it's probably fine. All right, let's go over the tools I have first here. These snips were like $2 on Amazon. The problem is that they get really gummy really fast. So you can see it doesn't want to open, which is kind of annoying. And then just a small rotary tool. I think this came with all these different bits and stuff and the whole thing was like 20 bucks, if even that. All right, so let's get started. So I like to start from the outside and then move to inside first. So especially starting with what's most fragile, because if I'm gonna screw up, I wanna know as soon as possible. So I'll take my snips and I'll get them. I usually make a clip that's far, kind of far away from my fragile point first. And the reason that I do that is because if you take something that's really close, sometimes it'll actually cause it to break, I've noticed. Because you have a lot of pressure and force really close to fragile parts. If you kind of clip farther away and weaken it, it does a little bit better. All right, so these are kind of wrapped around her hand your snips, really small clips. If you can actually like um, break the support in the middle before you clip the whole thing, sometimes that will like release the amount of tension that's on um, the break, if that makes sense. Another thing you can do to make this easier is that when you're adding your supports, I use mesh mixer for this, you can make the tip diameter a little bit smaller. I'd say mine is like 0.1 millimeters or something like that. If you guys want to see what profile I use, just let me know and I can do a little video on that or put it in the description. There we go. That was really fragile. Again, I like to start with the most fragile parts of the model because it's going to be the slowest and I'm usually the most patient in the beginning. Not always. Generally speaking, a good rule of thumb. All right. Also something good to note is you can start analyzing your model for any um, defects that might have happened. This model looks pretty much flawless. I'm not sure you can see it on the camera, but there's a line that goes straight through her eyes, which is super annoying. <laughs> that won't be too bad to fix though. I can just paint some resin in there with a small paintbrush and then cure it. And if I have any bumps or anything, I can use my little rotary tool and sand that out. Of course, since it's by her eyes, that's going to be a little harder to do. There's this tiny bit of support that's clinging to her finger. That looks much better. All right. A lot of times if I can, I like to remove supports with my hands. Just have a better feel for it. And these chunks right here, so you can take your snips and get close to it and kind of just break them off. But I can feel that's a pretty big piece right there. And if I clip that, it might cause it the cracks to go down towards the model and bring out a bigger chunk. So I'm probably going to try and just clip towards the top of that piece. There we go. Now it's still a rough spot there, but I'm not going to go in with this to fix that. I'll go in with my rotary tool a little later. All right. If you have long nails like I do, you can just kind of push them under there and they'll kind of fall out. There we go. Pretty nicely. Small note on why I supported this the way I do. A lot of people like to take models like this and rotate them 45 degrees back because it's going to decrease the suction force as it goes up. There's a smaller cross-sectional area if that makes a little more sense. Um, I don't like necessarily doing that. I'll risk the suction force because in this case, like her cape is really smooth. I don't want a bunch of little marks all over it. You can sand them out, but you don't have to. Why? <laughs> so I have this one nick right here. That's not going to be bad to sand out. If I lean her back, I would have a ton of them on there, which I obviously don't want. So this hand isn't going to be as fragile because her fingers are touching. So I'll snip kind of far away at first. You can see there's a huge crack that immediately went through to it. I want that to do it by itself as opposed to snipping a bigger piece and a lot of it, a bigger crack forming. 
Here we go. Again, I probably could have gone through and mesh mixer and made that tip diameter a little bit smaller. But for what I'm doing, this is a four inch tall figurine. It's a little more sturdy, generally speaking. All right, so I have most of the supports removed. Now I just have a lot of little rough spots from the support pock marks. A lot of them I really could get in closer right here and use my flush snips, but I found that's a lot faster if I just use my rotary tool, especially because my snips don't like to open and that just drives me insane. <laughs> All right. So as far as the nibs that I use, I'm a huge fan of using this one. It's pretty coarse. And then going back through with a polisher. All right, here we go. All right, so I finished sanding her and here she is. I put her in an IPA bath just to get rid of those white scuff marks for a little bit so I can see. The next step after this, once the IPA is fully dry, I'll cure her in a UV lamp probably about 10 minutes. Um, really the way I tell for that is just how it feels. If I scratch with my nail, see how that turns white right there? So I know it's definitely not done yet. But yeah, here she is. Probably put a couple coats of primer on her as well to bring out the details and then I'll put her straight in my Etsy shop. If you're curious in buying this figurine, I'll put um, a link in my description. Thank you so much.